Good to meet with Bert Martinez. Marketing consultant Bert Martinez joins Bert us Martinez for this Bert Martinez joins us now from the newsroom. This is going to take a lot of hard work. If anyone knows that, it's my guest. Real jobs are created by the private. His advice has helped millions, including celebrities and politicians. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I am excited to have the one, the only Becky Overbeck on the show today. I met Becky uh, just this past weekend. We were both hanging out uh, at the Arnold Sports Festival, and she had these weird bouncy shoes on. Time with Arnold. It was great. Amazing. It was fun. Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway, so you guys will watch that later. But I want to show you this. Becky's got this weird thing. Two weird things. Two weird things. And it's not what you're thinking about. Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm talking about these. Yeah. Becky, what yeah. the heck are you doing? These are called KB Jumps. They were originally created for people who had bad knees, bad lower back, and weren't able to do the cardio that they wanted to do. Okay. So running, uh, aerobics. So these were created back in the 90s um, for people to be able to do the cardio that they wanted to do. But since then, they've become more mainstream. So I teach choreographed dance where you can jump. Um, and it's great for all different ages, which are right from little kids, size one to three, and right up to men and women in their 60s bounce with me. Wow. Yeah. I'm almost 60. Okay. So I'm going to bounce with Becky. Yeah, we can both bounce. And, and anyway, she is a fun person to be around, lots of energy. And as I got to know her, I said, well, you know what? I got to bring you on the show. I got to talk to you. Because mother of three, she homeschooled her kids. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, she got into an investment with her uh, brother and lost their savings. And so she's out picking up cans and bottles to make extra money. Bottom line is the impression I got is that she is not afraid of hard work. Mm -hmm. She is awesome. Becky Overbeck, welcome oh. to the show. Thank you for having me, Bert. You bet, you bet. All right, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey, um, how you went from, uh, you know, uh, I guess start uh, about your uh, your journey as a, as a fitness model because you are um, not just Becky Overbeck, but you have the Babe Cave. Yeah. Uh, you are a sponsored athlete. Uh, so talk about your journey from picking up bottles, yeah. cans, to being a national sought after fitness model. <laughs> Thank you, Bert. Uh, so I would say, well, when I was growing up, I'm the youngest of seven children. So I have five brothers and one sister. And we grew up in a very small town uh, called New Liskert, Ontario. And we had nothing. We had like I wore my brother's clothes most of the time and played with their little dinky cars. And so we came from nothing and never had any dreams, didn't believe anything special could ever happen to a person like me or from our family. Um, so growing up, I my only goals really were to get married, happily married and to have children. And that was the extent of it. Um, but then I always had this love of fitness. So going back to when I was little, if there was any kind of, we didn't have many TV channels, but the ones that if on a uh, Saturday or something, there was like these exercise girls in their, their outfits. And I would always be so drawn to that and want to pretend like I was leading a fitness class. Um, so I got married, my husband and I at 18. And uh, so that's, we're almost 20 years married now. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And we had our first baby. So I was 22 and uh, her name's Georgia. So I had Georgia and Daisy and then Sophie soon after. And my life was babies and diapers. And um, I was very happy, very content. But I was never doing anything for myself. So you can't be the best mother and wife and friend you can be when you're not taking care of yourself. Um, so my only kind of, um, I would say, outings were the grocery store. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah. 
So anyways, you know, I, I just want to say something real quick. This is so important. Uh, if your only outing is going to the grocery store, uh, things might be a little uh, off-centered there. You know, uh, this is why so many moms uh, get depressed and there's all this gloom and doom because, you know, they, they feel as they have to be a super mom. And, and, uh, and the only way to be a super mom is to give, give, give. And then, of course, back to what you're saying, you can't be a good mom or a good partner if you're constantly giving and nobody's giving back to you, if, 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 you're, if your fuel tank's empty, yeah. you're going to run out. Yeah, and I think that that's why so many moms I see are at the end of their rope and they're frustrated um, because they're not really doing anything for themselves and, and living authentically. Like, what makes you happy? If you're not doing that, then you can't be a, a successful mom that's, like, enjoying their children and their husband and their life. So anyways, my husband, um, he bought me a one month pass to a local fitness studio. So I show up now going from this mom who's just going to the grocery store, I think I had on brown pants and a mustard color tank top. And I walk into this fitness studio and all these women are in great shape. And, and I just had our third daughter and Right away, I fell in love. It was the music and the, the uh, excitement, and it was something different. So I went from that first day kind of walking in, feeling a little bit out of place. But by the end of the month, it was like a light had flipped on for me. And it was like feeding my soul. It was like I had all this energy all of a sudden, and I was happier. So the, the month ended. But unfortunately, what I what you had brought up earlier, we had made an investment, we had saved up a bunch of money. And someone came to us with a business opportunity, an investment that we was, we were going to guarantee double our money, it's going to be amazing. And so we invested and we lost every cent. So that was awful. Um, what do you do? do at that point we can barely afford our groceries yeah. i'm still homeschooling our children so i was out for a walk one afternoon i'm pushing the stroller with the three girls and as we're walking i'm looking down and i see in every recycling bin beer bottles and beer cans and wine bottles and i had this epiphany of that's money and i could use that to pay not only for groceries but probably cover my gym membership so we walked well first we started putting them in the bottom of the stroller and then we were getting so many i said we have to go home and get a garbage bag so we walked home we got a garbage bag and here's my three girls and i all putting beer cans and beer bottles in the bag and at first i was shy and at first people were kind of making me feel a little bit uncomfortable right but that first day I returned the cans i think we made 40 dollars in like an hour the very wow. first yeah right we only had one vehicle at the time, so I couldn't drive. So that's why I pushed the stroller. Um, so then the next Tuesday comes around and I thought, okay, I'm going to try it again. And I think we made $60 that time. And yes. yes. And so over the weeks that this was happening, people started to take notice and they actually started to bring me out their bottles and cans in boxes because nice. they, yeah, they saw the effort I was putting in and they wanted to support me. So that was amazing. Um, so that continued. So I was able to continue exercising at that fitness studio. Um, then the owner of the fitness studio saw my extreme passion and love of fitness. And she said, you need to get certified. You need to be a trainer here. So I was like, I did not have that confidence in myself. So I thank her every day. Her name's Samantha. She gave me the confidence to, uh, start down this path so yes, yes i started uh, with, with zumba i got my first certification with zumba and then everything started from there so i went into spin and then kangu jumps which you saw kangu jumps yeah i just love kangu jumps and and uh we have a video somewhere on facebook with her kangu mm -hmm. jumps and i think on instagram as well yeah. and you know, Kanga jumps, it's like I said, it's it's this little boot thing and, you know, pay, uh, 
Uh, Becky, how tall are you? Five foot one. Five foot one. And I think with the Kangas, you're like, what, five, five? Yeah. Five, like, four? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 in the entire time I saw you at the Arnold, you did not have these things off. It was like a constant thing. Do you yeah. wear them like almost all the time? Yes, <laughs> they are like my second shoe. It's excellent. All right, so all right, so here you are, Samantha. Gets yes. you, uh, oh, gets you the confidence, right? I mean, you know, and sometimes. Let me tell you, these are angels in your lives, right? Somebody who pushes you, loves you enough to say you can do this. Yeah. And it's an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, and there's something about, I, I don't want to, I don't want to use the, necessarily the term about physical fitness, but the, you know, the, about using your body, right? Whether it's uh, physical fitness or athletics or sports, whatever you want to call it, that help you connect your mind and your body with yeah. your confidence and it really helps to nurture that confidence. And that's why uh, a lot of us put our kids in sports because we yeah. understand that there's a great connection there. Yeah. And so, okay, so you went from Zumba to uh, now we're up to spin. Anyway, right. go ahead. So we got all certified and everything's going amazing and I'm loving teaching. And all of a sudden, uh, Sam ends up deciding to close her studio because she was younger than me, actually, and she decided it was time to start a family. So she ends up closing her studio, and I had just got started. I was like, no, uh, what do I do now? But because I was homeschooling, I couldn't go get a job at another studio, and I'm racking my brain, and I decided, I asked my husband, I said, we have this bungalow. Do you think that maybe I could try something out of our basement. Like it was a, a, an open bungalow. And he said, if you want to try it, you know, be my guest. And so we went and bought um, a few kettlebells and a few sets of dumbbells and mats and so forth. Um, and we, I put out a program. I said, for eight weeks, is there anyone willing to join me for eight weeks in my basement, right? Wait, wait, wait. And so just so, just so we can clarify this, how did you get the word out? Is this is this still at Samantha's studio? How did you get no. connected? Okay, no. so how did you get the word out? Talk about this. Right. So in 2013, it was September. Uh, I started a Facebook page. I started my very first Facebook page, and I'm in the bathtub, and I'm like, "What am I going to call this little basement studio?" So I called it Becky Overbeck Drives Your Fitness, which stood for Body Fitness. And I'm in the bathtub and I thought, you know what, if it, if anything happens, I'll change it down the road, which I figured out you can't do that once you get so many followers. But anyway, so I put this up, I start my Facebook page and I'm sure everybody's going, what are you doing from your basement? So I had eight women who I am so grateful for that they believed in my uh, passion for this and they joined me every single day. So it was going to be two months of joining me in the basement. Well, two months ends and we all wanted to continue. I wanted to continue, they wanted to. So we kept going and uh, everything was going great and they were making progress and they would tell their friends and so forth. So we ended up gaining a few more followers, a few more people. Um, then, one day I was going on a vacation. So my family and I, we were going on a trip. So picture my Facebook page. I think it had maybe 200 followers. Okay. Yeah. And I said to myself, I don't want to leave these ladies. Like I felt almost guilty. Like we were doing so well and had such momentum. I don't want to leave them. So I made a couple little workout videos to leave for them on my Facebook page that while I was gone, they could continue exercising. So we go away and um, I wasn't on my social media that much uh, and I come home and my Facebook page was exploding. My personal profile had, I think there was like 2,000 friend requests. Wow. I know. My, wow. my Facebook page I think was 200 when I left and when I came home. I have it all written down in books because I was keeping track because I couldn't right. believe it. Uh, it was going almost a thousand a day. 
Wow. And growing and growing. And I was like, I can't even believe this. Every time I'd look, it was like, so this. And this is from, oh, wait, wait. And this is from two videos? Yeah. Two videos. You started with 200. Now you're in the thousands. Things are exploding. Yeah. And this is like the internet, you know, what do you call it? Lifestyle dream, right? Because you go on vacation, you're completely disconnected. You come back and it's nothing but boom, boom, boom. It, this is this is a we call it a fairy tale come true kind of a thing, right? Right. So all these friend requests and all these questions, I had more messages than I could even keep up with. I couldn't believe it. But here's what I did. My babies were little, the girls were little. I would put them to sleep at night and I would go and sit at my desktop and I would answer every single message. Every single message that came in that said, what are those things on your feet? Where do I buy them? Um, what is that song you're dancing to? What is, what are these? Right. Do they have classes in my area? Every single message I responded to. Thank you for your message. And I would look up the information for them. So I was staying up till three and four in the morning to make sure that every single message was replied. And I wouldn't go to sleep till I like got to the last one. And I'd wake up the next day and there was another. <laughs> so I ended up building this really great relationship with all these people and they're messaging me daily and our videos are going viral. I think one of them has over 20 million views on it. Wow. So everything's amazing. Our studio is growing. What I forgot to mention too, during this time, our classes started booming because everybody's like, oh my gosh, look at this, look at this. It's right in our town. Uh, unfortunately, someone on our street uh, went to the town and told them that we were running this business and it was too much traffic in our, on our, air, in our street. Sure, I could so see that. So they went to the town and the town um they told us we had to shut down our studio or we had to move and so we put our house up for sale no yeah for real well, that's awesome all right so so let me back up because yeah. uh I, just so we can uh, uh what do you call it uh get the details so when you started your eight week program mm -hmm. you were charging how much for the for those eight weeks uh it was 75 dollars i think okay and All right. Three three classes a week. Okay, nice. All right. And yeah. and so we had and, and, and so uh, so out of the uh, how many people signed up? Was it you said eight? Eight. eight. All right. You started with eight. Yeah. And now the town has come to you and you're in uh, what's the name of the town? It's in Canada. Allison. Okay. And so they've come to you and say, Hey, you either gotta shut it down or move. And you guys decide to, we're going to move. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right. All right. I love this. This is, this is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we, we put our house up for sale and it was taking a long time to sell. Um, but anyways, we, our builder who built our first home, he says, Hey, we've got a property that's only four minutes away from where you were, but it's in a different township, 10 acre property. Beautiful. Uh, it was not touched. It was just forests and trees. So he said, if you want, we can get started on this. And we hadn't even sold our old other home, but I had so much faith and belief that this was going to work out. We said, yes, go ahead, start. And he was so patient with us. So our house ends up selling, but now the new house isn't ready yet. And we've got three kids and a dog and three cats and a bunny. So we ended up living out of a hotel. We had our animals at the new building, so where we were building the new house, and we didn't want to leave our clients in the lurch for working out, so our builder lent us his shop. So a massive garage, and we, so every day I would go to the new gym, or the new house, to see it on that, take care of the animals. Then I would go to his shop, teach classes there, and then come back to the hotel until our house was finally ready. And, and, and meanwhile, are you still homeschooling? Oh, yes. So you're homeschooling. So mm -hmm. so your day started at what time in the morning? Six, I guess six. Six, okay. Six and then ended at what? Midnight? Ten? Oh, uh, two, maybe. <laughs> That's still my day. Those are still my days. But um, 
So, okay. so you basically live on on, uh, four, on hours. four hours of sleep. Yeah. Okay, all right. And uh, so you know, but but here's here's what I love about the story so far uh, is that first of all, you know, you, you you organically grew into this. It wasn't some kind of master plan, and that's wonderful. But also, there's this spirit of not giving up. You know, here's a roadblock. I'm going to go around it. Here's another roadblock. I'm going to go under it. Here's another roadblock. Let's get over it. You know, you, you figure out a way. Yeah. And, and I think that is the difference between those individuals who succeed and those that don't. Because I think very few people would have said, hey, we're going to just sell our house because we're not going to give up on this business. So at this point, uh, between the hotel and the new house, and and you're you're doing your your studio out of the uh, construction site uh, garage thing whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, your husband is he still working? Where? Yeah. Okay, so he still has a job, and you're yeah. doing this full time. Plus, you're raising the kids. Yeah. This goes to show you why uh, women are typically better than men. Because let me tell you, I don't know too many guys who are going to go from you know teaching the you know from uh, uh, homeschooling. Yeah. To working I to know. Then, you know uh, then getting on your laptop and, and taking care of your clients. Yes. Basically, four hours of sleep a day is pretty rough. I don't care who you are. That that takes yeah. a toll on you. Yeah. All right. So, yes. so um, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. So we finally moved into the house. The house was completed. <clears throat> it's still in our basement. So we built the house with enough space in the basement again. Things are going great. Classes are going well. Uh, everything's awesome. And then one day someone asked me for a meal plan. It had just been at the end of class. Uh, and keep in mind, everything I did as far as meal plans, workouts are all posted complimentary. So we do that all. I do that all for free. So I write new workouts every single day. I, I create meal plans. I put them up for people just to use because I believe that, um, that that's important. But anyway, so someone asked me for a meal plan. Okay. I, I go on my Facebook page. I go, I open up my Facebook and there's a message and it says your account has been disabled. Uh, and someone, it popped up one of our old videos from years prior that someone had reported. And the only option was to press continue. So I pressed continue and sure enough, my account was disabled. So Whoa. That, uh -huh. oh. so All right. So this has got to be extremely devastating because this is really the only website you have. That's it. I didn't even have Instagram. I don't, or I did have it, but it was just, I never focused on it. Right. So, so just to back up. All right. So somebody reported what, uh, that a, a video, video was inappropriate or what? Um, it was just our kangaroo videos. I don't know the reason, and I I should have like I should have screenshotted or something because it right. just went so fast, and all of a sudden it was gone. So my private account, my profile was disabled. Wow! Uh, so all our baby pictures, baby videos, I had put everything on there, and it was gone. And what was worse was I was the only administrator to my business page. Oh. So, uh, so that page that I'd grown to almost 60,000 followers all organically with the little blue check mark, that is still there, but I can't access it, nor can anyone else because I was the only administrator. So if wow, anyone else this is crazy. So somebody at Facebook, you know, uh, this is something that I think could probably still be rectified. I'm sure that somebody watching this video can reach out to Becky and help her fix it with Facebook. That would be fantastic. All right. So anyway, so you, so anyway, so that, what Facebook page was that that you can no longer access? It's the uh, body drive. What is it called? Body fitness. Yeah. Body yoga fitness. drives your fitness. Yeah. So I tried, I messaged Facebook every single day. I spent about a month and a half of not even knowing what to do because that was my only picture. You wake up in the morning and your whole job was just taken out from under your feet. That was every, that, that was where I posted our schedules and the way I communicated with everybody. 
gone. And wow. I would try, I, I opened a new account about six weeks later, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's devastating because, uh, like you said, you have everything there. I mean, you know, so first, just so everybody's clear on this, your personal profile with all your family stuff is gone. Gone. That personal profile is the only administrator to this uh, uh, body fitness that you can no longer access. And, uh, uh, and so anyway, so you've yeah. lost all communication. This is, this is obviously very, very detrimental. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, on your new business page, do you have more than one administrator? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I tell everybody that now. I'm like, if you have a business page, please add other administrators. Yeah, that's a great lesson. Uh, right there, that's a great lesson. Have more than one administrator. All right. So you open up. So what's the new Facebook uh, page called? Yes. Becky over Be Beck Fitness Babe Cave. Becky Overbeck Fitness Babe Cave. Babe Cave. I love the Babe Cave uh, or Babe Cave. I, I just think that's such a neat name. Uh, and uh, I like that because, again, um, having three daughters of my own and, and my wife, I think that uh, women need to have a Babe Cave where they feel comfortable, where they can just yeah. – you know, they can relate to each other and support each other. So I love this babe cave. I think it's great. Thank you. All right. So you, so six weeks after your Facebook after your Facebook page gets taken down, you create yeah. Becky Overbeck babe, babe cave. cave. Yep. We start all over again. That's what it's kind of felt like over the six years is like these big hurdles that you they keep being placed in front of you, and you have these options of like do you give up do you like what do i do now where do i go what do i do and then you you just keep going yes so yeah. we uh we started the new page and we started rolling again but man it's taken a lot of work and, and so it's becky overbeck fitness yeah slash babe cave i'm gonna put this up here real quick Thank uh, you. slash one one positive thing that came from that was in those six weeks where people couldn't get a hold of me on Facebook, our Instagram happened to go um, a little bit more viral because they couldn't reach me any other way. So, oh, thank you. So, yeah, we ended up, uh, my, yeah, my Instagram, that's where I had to all of a sudden shift my focus. Like, what do I do? Okay, here's Instagram. Let's try and figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's fantastic. So, and it's interesting sometimes, again, what we think is just total devastation, uh, yeah. you know, helps us out. I mean, yeah. so, so yeah, you couldn't access Facebook. So now your, 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 your fans and your clients are kind of, you know, forcing Instagram to work for you. And that obviously worked out really good. I think you have like twenty five or thirty thousand followers on Instagram, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, that's amazing. So I think that you know, again, yeah. it goes like you said. Uh, you know, there's always going to be obstacles. Yeah. Uh, and so you can either you have two choices. Uh, you can either stop or keep going. And and, and of course you kept going. Yeah. And so how did you go from? Uh, you know, Overbeck, uh, Becky Overbeck Fitness forward slash Babe Cave, Babe Cave to uh, fitness model and yeah. and uh, sponsored athlete. Talk about this. Okay, this is a crazy story. Uh, so, in 2017 January, I got a, an email in our email, and it said to apply to become Miss Health and Fitness, and I looked at it and it was like only a thousand women across the world were going to be accepted. And okay. then they had to kind of like compete against each other to be the winner. And I was like, there is not a chance in hell that I'm even going to be accepted in the thousand women. So I deleted the email and moved on with my day. Okay. Yes. The very next day I got another email. And it was the exact same one saying, apply to become Miss Health and Fitness 2017. 
And I read it again and I was like, why not? Just apply, right? What's the worst that can happen? There was no money that I needed to like pay to, to become or par- become part of it. So I filled it out and I sent it back and it said that I would know within five days if I was accepted. So the five days passes and I remember I had just finished a fitness class and I had this email that said I had been accepted. And so 1,000 women across the world were now um, vying to win. So, and, and this contest is taking place where is it? Is it is it uh, on the internet or is so it? Are you guys all having to go someplace? So it was taking place on Facebook. So this was before my page was disabled. So keep in mind all those people that I spent hours responding to and building a relationship with. Now all of a sudden, I put up, "Hey guys." Um, I kind of need your help now. And all of those people voted. Yeah. Yes. So long story short, I had no confidence. I didn't think I was going to get anywhere. Long story short, I ended up placing in the top three out of a thousand women. Whoa. And yes. And I won a feature in uh, Muscle and Fitness Hers magazine. Unbelievable. I remember the day the phone rang and I dropped to my knees I couldn't believe it. I was like, what just happened? So this is where it gets even crazier. A lady that had been working out at our studio owned a local supplement shop. Her name's Brenda, and here's another angel. So she says to me, Becky, I've been buying supplements from her for a long time. And she says, Becky, I have, oh, no, 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 no. I have to go back. Okay. So picture Brenda and I have a really great relationship. I'm buying supplements from her. That's all you need. Okay. When the Miss Health and Fitness, when I won that, the top three, I won a photo shoot with uh, another angel, Dave Louse. So I go to his studio and this was my very first photo shoot. And I was so nervous and I don't think I'd eaten much that day. I was so nervous. So we finished the shoot, which took hours, and I'm sitting at this high table, and there's all these people around. My husband's there, and all these people are talking, and it was almost like I wasn't even a part of it. Like, I was just sitting there and zoned out. So I reach uh, towards the table. I reach towards, there's this stack of magazines. There's, There's about, say, 15 magazines, and I reach in, and I pulled one out, and I looked at it. And this man on the cover had the best abdominal muscles I'd ever seen. They were insane. And I remember saying to myself quietly, one day I would love to work out with this man. Like his abs are amazing. I put the magazine back in the pile. And we ended up leaving that studio that day. The very next week, Brenda, who owns the Popeye supplement store, comes to me and she said, Becky, I have this dinner um, and I would love it if you'd love to come. It's, It's a supplement dinner and you're invited. So we go, my husband and I, we show up, we walk in the door and who is there but the man on the cover of that fitness magazine. I couldn't believe it. I had never vocalized it. I didn't tell any human about it. Right. I'm looking around the room like, what is happening? Okay, so we have dinner. I got to meet the man. I think I got something autographed. It was amazing. And we go home. Literally, I think three days later, our phone rang. And it was that man with those insane abdominals, Marcus Collius. And he invited to be invited me to be one of his sponsored athletes. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so this is, this is a, what do you call it? Uh, uh, you know, some people may call it the law of attraction. Uh, you know, you look at this picture, it, it obviously uh, resonates with you on a very emotional level. You put it back in your file. And as you said, you didn't tell anybody Nobody. and all, you know, all these things fall into play. So this is, this is fantastic. I love it. I love I'm it. I'm getting goosebumps. Um, so I end up signing with him, uh, June, July 6th. 2017. So I went from being just a fitness trainer in my basement to winning Miss Health and Fitness to a photo shoot with Dave Lowe's to becoming a sponsored athlete. 
So then I, uh, I started doing more photo shoots. I was invited to the Arnold Classic and the Olympia in Las Vegas. Um, yeah, crazy stuff. That is wild. Yeah, that's crazy. But you know what? It, 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 I think it also goes to show you that, uh, again, it, think what would have happened if you would have given up. I mean, right? just, just think, you know, you had so many chances to give up and yeah. – be, you know, because you kept going, all this other stuff happened, right? And it's just, man, it's amazing. All right, so, uh, so what year is this when the first time that you go to the Arnold and to the Olympia? Yeah, so I think my first Arnold was 2018, uh, March of 2018. And I have always, 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 since I was little, I have always looked up to Arnold Schwarzenegger. I have thought about Arnold, I think, for 35 years. Um, every movie, every motivational video, I was always drawn to Arnold. I, I don't know, like at five, why am I drawn to Arnold? I don't know why. Um, as when I started my fitness studio, I had pictures of him all up on a wall. So it was like, we had this bulletin board and there's pictures of him and pictures of me beside each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like I have newspapers with him cut up, like I have them up there, like things that I kind of looked up to him about in his motivation and, and things when I was going through those really hard times with the, uh, with the house and with my Facebook page, it was like one of his motivational videos would come on and it'd be like, you know, keep going. You never give up, do the right. reps, keep going, focus. And that's truthfully, I totally, credit a lot of my my drive and dedication to him yeah 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 you know what i i think that uh, arnold is unique in the sense that uh he's not just a guy who was a champion athlete right uh i know that for me personally i connected with uh schwarzenegger when i was i don't know somebody showed me his uh one of his books i think it was uh I forgot what it was called, Story of a Bodybuilder. I have it somewhere around here and yeah. autographed. And anyway, yeah. wow. uh, so um, what was interesting is for me, not only did I like his physique, but I like the fact that he was an immigrant. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm an immigrant. I, I came from Cuba, and this was the first really successful immigrant that I remember uh, and the fact that he, you know, I remember, uh, in pumping iron when, when he said, you know, uh, I'm retiring, this is my last year in competition. Uh, you know, uh, even though, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be a bodybuilder anymore. Bodybuilder is always going to be part of my life. And, mm -hmm. and he was going to go into the movies and I was amazed because I thought, this guy has his work cut out for him if he's going to try to make it in the movies, because you know, he's got this really thick accent and he's a, you know, he's a big muscle guy and usually big muscle guys don't get a lot of great parts and, no. and uh, all that stuff. And so, uh, and on top of that, he's got this really huge friggin' name, you know, uh, I believe it is actually like 26, you know, letters and stuff like that. So I was amazed at his ability to, create his reality and yeah. sure enough you know he starts making movies yeah. and you know it's just the guy's unique because he goes from being a champion in, in do anything to, yeah from a champion over here in bodybuilding to a champion in business and real estate to a champion in the movies to a champion in, in politics and a lot of people don't know this well, you and I are talking about the Arnold, which is the Arnold Sports Festival. And before that, it was called the Arnold Classic. Yeah. And, you know, it's now in six continents. It's all over the world. It's the biggest yeah. sports festival in the world. It's bigger than the Olympics. It's it's like I think this year they had 60 or 70 comp uh, 60 or 70 different competitions, uh, like 30,000 competitors or 50,000 competitors and like two or 300,000, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, consumers or fans, whatever you want to call it. 
it's huge. I mean, it really shuts down Columbus. Uh, and I was talking to the mayor of uh, Columbus, and the Arnold generates $52 million in that three wow. days for Amazing. the city. Yeah, good. That's it's good. incredible. So, yeah. you know, he's a, he's a unique person in, in so many ways. Uh, and, and I like the fact that you brought up the, the reps, 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 because yes. when you talk to Arnold, uh, you know, you realize that he is, uh, again, he's definitely unique, but at the same time, he's not. I mean, he's just, he's just a guy who believed in himself and is willing to put in the reps and he doesn't care what people say. And he's just, got, you know, he's, he's got those blinders on and he just goes, goes, goes. It's it just, he gives you yes. the inspiration or at least for me in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm not thinking big enough. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happens when you get around people like him. If you start realizing that even though you think, you know, or at least in my case, I thought I was thinking big. And then when I started getting around him, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm an amateur thinker. You know, I got little tiny thoughts and, and anyway, so uh, it's been a great experience. So I, I'm like you, I'm, I'm fascinated by his ability to, to constantly achieve and then achieve and then achieve. Yes. All right. So, so here you are, you got all the stuff up uh, on, call it your vision board. You got all the stuff about Arnold. You get to go out to, uh, to the Olympia. You get to go to the Arnold Classic and you're being sponsored by what company? Magnum Nutraceuticals. Magnum. Yeah. There's a little plug there for Magnum Nutraceuticals. Yeah. Um, Marcus. Marcus. Yeah. And uh, so, so, so uh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So Marcus has known my like, um, my desire to meet, like, I've wanted to meet Arnold my entire life. This has been something, but I didn't know even, like, how am I going to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger? I live in Alliston, Ontario. So anyways, when I joined Magnum, I didn't know that they went to the Arnold Sports Festival. Right. I didn't know that. So um, last year when we went, Arnold, I saw him, oh my goodness. I had gone to lunch. So when I was working the booth, somebody came up to me and they said, if you want to go for lunch now, you can. Right. And I was like, okay, but I didn't want to leave because what if Arnold came out while I'm at the hotel? So I ran back to the hotel and I put like five bites of food in my mouth. And then I was running back. And one of the photographers that was with Magnum uh, in Status Fitness Magazine, they stopped me and they were like, Becky, show us your boots and, and they're talking to me and they're asking me questions and I was like okay but I, I really got to get back to the booth you know and they're like okay well before you go back to the booth they were asking me to run through the crowd to build up energy about the boots and get all this excitement I'm like okay okay so <laughs> I'm, I'm running through the crowds and getting this excitement up and finally they're like okay let's go back to the magnum booth so we go back and all of a sudden, this is no joke, uh, we, before we can reach the booth, an arm comes down like this in front of me. And they're like, please stand here. Make a hole. I was like, okay. So I'm standing here, I have no clue. And then I was, I was like, may I ask why I'm standing here? And they're like, well, Arnold's about to come through. And I was like, are you kidding me? And all of a sudden my eyes welled up with tears. Like, I'm like, how did that just happen? Like, how is the timing perfect? The person that was ahead of me continued walking. Here I am in the perfect position to see Arnold. So I had my camera ready and I think it was way over here. Arnold's walking towards me and I'm like, I can't even focus. But he walked right past me and it was amazing. And I was like, that just made my life. Yeah. Um, well, so so let me tell everybody, uh, kind of cute, uh, give us some context here and cue them in what's going on. So so at the Arnold, as you guys can imagine, I, I always I, I describe it like this: when you're in the expo area, think of a really busy nightclub. It is just bodies to bodies uh, on a Saturday. It's almost impossible to move. Crazy. Um, Arnold, when he comes in, people just, of course, want to meet him. They want to get an autograph or take a picture. So he just gets swamped. 
So he's got a, a crew of, of security. We call it the security bubble. And they make a bubble around him so he can move through the crowd swiftly. And one of the things that Arnold does is he tries to go to, uh, to the booths and say hello to everybody, especially the booths that are like Magnum, that, are, that, that tend to be a little bit bigger uh, because they're the ones who, make, uh, who, who are putting in the extra money. And so Arnold will go by and, and say hello to everybody. Hey, hello, you know. And, and, so, uh, uh, and so not that he's uh, conceited or stuff or, 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 try, or trying to uh, be Hollywood is that if he doesn't have this bubble around him, he yeah. won't be allowed to move. I yeah. mean, because people are just crazy. And, yeah. so, uh, and so this is what happens. And so there's, again, the security that tries to be as cordial as they can to oh, yeah. allow they Arnold to move swiftly. Go ahead. Yeah, they're great. So that was a year ago, and I had somewhat of a video that I put on Instagram. It was like my first encounter with him. Couldn't believe it. Shocked, right? Right, right. So um, I've been messaging Arnold on Instagram since 2015. Um, I've been messaging him just like, hi, Arnold. My name's Becky. <laughs> You're amazing. I would love to meet you one day. So in my mind, we have a history. <laughs> 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 oh, well, oh, hey, uh, at least we've identified one of the stalkers uh, for Arnold, right? <laughs> yeah. No, not a stalker. Okay. No, so, no. I mean, you know, you just have a pretend, yeah, you know. Hey, you know what, though? But, that, but that's, yeah. that I think uh, is uh, just part of making it more real, right? Yeah. All right. So you're messaging him and. Okay. Yeah. So. Now, a year goes by, and uh, Magnum chooses of their, like, 200 athletes who's coming to the next uh, expo. So I end up getting my invitation to come to this year. And so as politely as I could, I want to stay at the booth and support Magnum and Marcus. But politely, I was like, Marcus, is there any opportunity that I could have some time away on Sunday so that I could go and maybe see the seminar or – or try and like get to see Arnold. And he said, you've been such a great athlete. Uh, you go above and beyond and I would like to do one better for you. He goes, I want to give you my tickets for lunch with Arnold. And I was like, uh, again, I fell to the floor that day. My kids and my husband can attest to it. I was like, what? That was beyond my imagination. Um, so we get to the Arnold Classic and um, a, one of Marcus's uh, friends gave out the tickets for, I guess, the different events that were happening. So I got mine and I put them into my suitcase. Well, Sunday morning happens and I pull those tickets out and it didn't say lunch. It said the seminar and to be there at 10 a.m., but I was told by Marcus to be in the Battelle ballroom at 11.45. And I was like, oh dear, I don't know what to do. But Magnum's booth has to go back to, you're gonna die. You're gonna die when you hear this story. This is the best story and I want everyone to hear this because to me it's very important. Okay, so Marcus and his team ended up flying back to, they had to leave the expo and the, the ones who were driving could stay back and they could finish study, uh, tearing down and, and this and that. So Marcus and his team are gone now. So my ticket says to be at this place at 10 a.m. for the seminar. So I'm at the booth and I don't know what to do. Do I leave the booth now or do I try and go for lunch at 11.45? So I'm like, I'm humming back and forth what to do. So finally, I, I said to one of the people, is it okay if I go over and check it out? And they said, yes, go, go, go. So I get to the Battelle ballroom, and I think it's about 10, maybe 10, 15, 10, 30. Every seat in that space is taken, gone, done. And I was like, my heart is like, oh, man. Like, if I miss this and I miss the lunch, so I kind of walked up to the very front of the seminar where um, the stage was, and I sat down on the floor in front of an older gentleman, and I asked if I would be able to stay there. 
he said, go ahead, sit down, you're good. So I stayed there the whole seminar and I watched everything. I watched Arnold come out and Lee Haney and Phil Heath and all of them. And it was awesome. And I'm thinking, okay, I might be able to get a picture with Arnold. I might be able to. So my hopes are all high and I'm so excited. But then his people come out on stage and they said, you have to go now. It's lunchtime. You have to go to the luncheon. Now, real quick, let me ask you this. So yeah. at this point, you had never gotten your picture with Arnold? I had had a glimpse of him. I took a selfie with him on Friday, I think it was. I happened to bump into him and get a little selfie with him, but I didn't love the picture. But anyway, <laughs> I was excited to be with him. And yes, I had like a glimpse. Right. Now, just, you know, now what, uh, for those of you guys who might be, uh, uh, what do you call it, are involved with the Arnold at all, you're, you actually made the, the highlight reel of you and Arnold yes. taking the selfie together, uh, which is pretty cool. So now you can say that you're actually in a movie with Arnold. <laughs> talk about talk about the law of attraction and all yeah. that other stuff. Okay, so anyway, so you leave you leave the seminar. You're gonna go have lunch. Go on. No, no, no. So oh, okay. my ticket. So yeah, I'm sitting in the front on the floor, and they take Arnold off stage, and I'm like, oh crap! Now I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be at this luncheon, but I don't know where it is. How do I get there? So I sit there for a minute. This is where I want people to listen. So I'm sitting there and I, I, I get up and they've taken Arnold. I don't know where he's gone to, but I cannot leave this expo and not meet him. Like, so I walk out of the Battelle ballroom and there's these men everywhere dressed in like they must work there. And I asked them, I'm like, can you please tell me where the luncheon is with Arnold? And they're like, we have no clue. Sorry, I don't know. Every single person I asked, no, sorry, we don't know. And I'm just like, oh, I got to figure this out. I'm walking around and every single person, no, 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 one after the next. So I'm standing there and I'm going, okay, I guess I'll just go back to the booth. And so I got on the escalator and I took it down and I'm in the convention center and I'm walking back towards the booth. And all of a sudden my brain goes, what are you doing? You didn't come this far to only go this far. <laughs> so I, I, love walk that. Back, I walk back up the escalator. I get back on I go to the top and I'm looking around for any kind of clue, any human that could help me. All of a sudden, to my left, I see two gentlemen with a giant poster. And they are looking at a magazine and they're like, okay, we got to go. He's over here. And I looked at them and I said, you're going to the luncheon? And they said, yes. And I said, I'm supposed to be at that luncheon. And they're like, come on, let's go. So I followed them. They're running practically. And I'm in my kangoo jumps. <laughs> So we're going down the escalator, through the convention center, across another hallway, in an elevator, down another escalator, into a totally different building. And it's funny when I've told people this story, they're like, were you nervous at all where you were going? <laughs> <laughs> Following these two men? And I was like, no, not at all. I was going to see Arnold. So we get to the doors where the luncheon is finally. And these two gentlemen have VIP passes and they walk right through. And the lady says to me, you know, hi, can I see your ticket? And I was like, this is it. And she goes, well, this isn't for the lunch. And I said, I know I'm supposed to have tickets for the luncheon, but they got mixed up and my, my sponsor is already gone and I don't have the right ticket. And she said, okay, what's your name and what's your company you're with? And sure enough, they were able to uh, find out that it was Marcus and that I was with him. So they let me in and she goes, hurry quick. You can get your picture with Arnold right now. He's right there. And I can't see the lineup. There's a lineup for food and there's a lineup over here. And I'm like, where is it? Where is it? And all of a sudden I look over and he's done taking pictures. 
And my heart just sinks again, like, ah. Uh. So now he's in the lineup to get food and I'm not gonna bother him. And I don't even know where I'm supposed to sit. And that's when I met you. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Because so 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 Becky and I are in the food line and again and I was not hungry. What's that? I say I was not hungry at all. Well, <laughs> I was hungry, uh, but uh, anyway, so here's uh, Becky, uh, and she's got these Kanga jumps on, these little weird boots, and, and we'll have to have the editing team splice them in. But bottom line is, uh, I, I basically said, you know, what are those? And we strike a conversation, and I thought – that you were at the Arnold to sell those boots, but right. it was not the boots. It was the it was the Magnum uh, uh, Magnum supplements. Yeah. And uh, here we are. They just swapped up again. And yeah. uh, so um, so I said, well, listen. Afterwards, we got to do a video about these Kanga jumps. And of course, you said, sure, no problem. And and uh, I think that was it. And yeah. uh, and then of course, uh, so what happens during the luncheon? Is they they the well we had Governor Kasich there we had Mayor Andy uh, who's the current mayor of Columbus uh, uh, Andrew Git, uh, Gittner I forgot his last name something like that anyway so people get up there they say thank you some people win some awards and, and things like that and and uh, it takes about I don't know 30, 40 minutes and then it's it's done and the whole time I'm looking at Arnold I'm like he's right there. <laughs> Yes. So then everybody's done speaking and they're about to take Arnold off the stage again. And I'm like, oh no, like he's leaving again. Like what am I going to do? And then this beautiful man comes up behind me and he touches my shoulder, which is Bert, whom we're speaking with. And he goes, do you want to film the thing about the jumps now? And I was like, yes, I would love to, but I would really love to meet Arnold. And that's when Bert took me over to Arnold and all of a sudden I was hand in hand with Arnold and Bert's <laughs> supposed to be videoing it, but Bert. <laughs> it was, you know, poor, you know, I, I felt so bad because I know, or I thought I hit that video button and apparently oh, no. didn't I hit the, the, the picture button, right? And so anyway, I messed up the video. Yeah. I felt bad about that, but I, wow. not only did you get to meet him, you got the picture you wanted, you got to hug him multiple times. Uh, it was a really cool event. And then, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, somebody said, hey, we'd like to get your information because you might make it in the book. So, booyah. We just got to keep manifesting. Yeah, keep manifesting. Yep, yep, yep. I love that. So, so it, was, it was kind of a neat thing. And, um, you know, uh, Arnold was very gracious, uh, you know, for a guy who does so much and, and people are always yanking on him and wanting yes. more and more of his time. You know, uh, you know, I was able to go up there and, and introduce you to Arnold and, and he took a few, uh, you know, he took some pictures with you. He, and, and the 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 thing is, is that, uh, again, my experience uh, is that when uh, whenever possible, he likes to give back. Yeah. He did. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, all right, so after that, um, you go back to uh, sunny, warm Toronto, Canada. Totally. <laughs> and to the Babe Cave, which, again, I think is fantastic. So, uh, for, so at the Babe Cave, tell us more about this. Is this still – is this – what is the babe cave? What do women get out of it? We, we you know, we've talked about some, uh, some classes. We've talked about some, some nutritional classes as well. Yeah. So go ahead, talk about this. Okay. So from day one, uh, another thing that I'd kind of been, uh, always said as my goal was to help as many people as possible to reach their fitness goals. And so I, I don't know where it started, but um, it was more than just working out to me. It was more than, you know, do your squats, do your lunges. It was like, tell me what you want to achieve. Tell me, 
show me a picture of what you want to look like. Show me, um, give me a date. Like, do you have a vacation? Do you have, and it gave us a goal to work towards. And every single person I was working with was making insane results. Getting, like, we're talking, I have multiple women down over a hundred pounds. Wow. Um, women who'd hated exercise until coming to the studio, uh, never had eaten healthy their entire life. And now all of a sudden they fell in love with exercise and fell in love with uh, healthy eating and they became more positive. Um, yeah, like, so now we have almost hit 2000 men, women and children that we've worked with and I've personally worked with in less than six years. So we went from eight clients to now almost 2000. That's fantastic. That's amazing Great. stuff there. And um, all right, so you have a pretty outrageous, it's not, I don't, I don't know if it's a six pack or an eight pack, but uh, oh, okay, so give, give us a shot there. All right, let's see. <laughs> All right, there you go. All right, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you. So, all right, so let's talk about this because as this athlete with a six pack, mm -hmm. let's talk about getting abs. How hard is it, you know, how long did it take you to get there and stay there? Because I'm thinking, you know, uh, are you constantly – focused on your meal plan and what your intake is and stuff like that. Are you spending like, well, you're obviously spending several hours a day in the gym because you're, you're, you're at the gym. That's what you do for a living. Yeah. So um, when people think of somebody with a six pack, they always think of somebody who is, this, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sacrificing everything to maintain those, those six packs. So talk about that. Right. So I've maintained this six pack for almost eight years now, every single day of my life for eight years. It has not been, I see a lot of people post that, you know, you, you're, you can't be happy or you can't do this or that. And I will say I am a hundred percent happy. I am full of energy. I feel amazing. You can ask anyone in our gym. Um, my, my focus is on eating healthy food, clean food. I start every day with fruit. I love fruit, strawberries and blueberries and, um, Things like that. I love fresh vegetables. We, as a homeschooling mom, that's what our snacks are. They're always out, fresh veggies and fresh fruit. It doesn't feel like any kind of sacrifice to me to eat fruit and vegetables. I do eat uh, chicken and we eat fish and shrimp and um, salads. I love salads and yogurt and this and that. You'll never see me eat a donut, a real donut. You'll never see me eat a piece of pizza though. Um, unless we home make it something like a lighter option, but, uh, that doesn't feel like a sacrifice to me. Well, I, you know what, what, what's happened, I think is people have completely been brainwashed and they're mm -hmm. confused as to what is good for the body. Yeah. One of the things that, that I, that I laughed at quite a bit at the Arnold, cause this happens every year. Mm -hmm. is that there's somebody at the Arnold selling some version of protein junk food. This yeah. year, there was a booth that was protein donuts. Yeah. You know, and, you know, God bless you. If You know, I know you're trying to make a living, but to me, it's it's it just doesn't make sense. I mean, you're either going like, to eat. It depends on your goals. And I brought those donuts home for our daughters to try. Okay. Right. But, and, and I'll, I'll buy protein bars and things like that. But our main diet, nothing gives me more energy and makes me feel more alive than a fresh plate of fruit. That there's nothing better. And yeah. I would never, yeah. So yeah, anyway, I'm the same way. I, you know what? I, I love uh, fresh fruit. I, I'm, I'm like you. I like to start my day with fresh fruit. Uh, and, and I think that so many of us, uh, again, we make it harder than it needs to be. Um, you know, and it's, and I like what you said, it really depends on your goals. Yeah. Um, you know, not everybody wants to work hard as hard as it takes to be a 
physique competitor or, yeah. or carry around a six pack. That's a different goal than somebody who wants to be, uh, you know, uh, fit and trim, uh, yeah. healthy, you know, right. you know, and, and if you look at, uh, you know, I got to spend some time with uh, Eddie Hall, Eddie the Beast Hall. And, and a lot of power lifters are big and chunky people. It's a yeah. different goal. So you yeah. got to start with what's right for you. Yeah. But I, I do think, and I want to get your opinion on this, Becky. I think that, you know, things like processed foods and sugars and all these things are so abundant. Yeah. And they are so well marketed. Yeah. That's why people are struggling. That's why people are sick. Uh, you know, I, I think somebody said this to me and it, so far it's always been true that if you want to know what to really eat, you, you go, uh, what do you call it? Um, you stay outside of the aisles at the grocery store, right? Because the fruit and the vegetables are outside the aisles, the fresh meat, fish, yeah. chicken, you know, everything yeah. is on the outside of the aisles. And I think that's a, you know, it's something to think about, but yeah. you know, people forget that we live, in a capitalistic society and sometimes yeah. these companies do whatever they can to sell food uh yeah. you know it's just like with the cigarette companies they will do whatever they can to tell you that smoking isn't bad for you they yeah. did that for years yeah. um there there's just a lot of junk out there but i think again being human we humans sometimes complicate things mm -hmm. and make oh, it yeah. harder than it is so two things I want to talk about with that. One thing is when I ask my clients, you know, how's your diet? What are you eating? Are you tracking your calories? And they're like, well, at the beginning, they'll say, well, I eat healthy. Yeah, I eat healthy. You will never lose any fat if you're not in a calorie deficit. So if you are always either eating the same amount of calories that your body needs or eating more, your body will never be forced to use your fat for fuel. So I often suggest that my clients think of their calories like a daily budget. So you get, say, say you're on a 1600 calorie a day diet. So I'll say to them, pretend in the morning you wake up and I've put, I've deposited 1600 calorie dollars on your nightstand. So you wake up and you go to the kitchen and before you put anything in your mouth, you read the label. So you pull something out of the fridge and the yogurt says three quarters of a cup for 100 calories. So you either use a free app like MyFitnessPal or you can write it down and you can say, okay, I had a yogurt for 100 calories. Then you had a banana, 85 calories, so on throughout the day. When you get to your 1600 calories, that's it. That's all you can eat. Drink some water, go to bed. If you consistently do this for seven days, if you create a big enough deficit, so if you create a 500 calorie deficit every day for seven days, you will have burned off the equivalent of one pound of fat. So 3,500 calories equals one pound of fat. So if people are coming to me and they're exercising and they're not losing fat, say two, three weeks are going by, I know that they haven't created that deficit. They're still consuming more calories than their body needs. Yeah. And, and you know what? And I, I'm glad you brought it up. It's not that hard. No. And again, it goes back to, you know, your goals or your mm -hmm. commitments, because I, I've met a lot of people. Uh, I personally use Fitness Pal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I tell people all the time, if you really want to get a six pack, you know, uh, I show them the, uh, oh, uh, the scale, the food scale that I use. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but, but, I, but I'm like you, I also think about it as money going in and out. And so yeah. if you're not willing to track your money, Mm -hmm. Yes. Chances are you're going to bounce checks, or there's there's chances are uh, that uh, that you're going to uh, not be as good with your money if exactly. you're not willing to if you're not willing. And, and again, the same thing with your calories, uh, because you can you can get up in the morning and have uh, let's say if back to your 1600 calories, you can have 1600 calories worth of Oreos. Yeah. And, and uh, you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, 
not feeling good, uh, or you can have 1,600 calories worth of fresh fruits, vegetables, uh, lean meats, uh, whatever, you know, yeah. whatever you want. So it's a choice. So according to that, one thing I have found, so I have majority of clients that I work with, are they love it, they lose fat, it's great. But then recently, I don't know what it's been in the last, I'm going to say maybe six six months to eight months, there's been this huge change in society of this self-love thing. Yeah. And it's the most warped view of self-love that I can even understand. So for me thinking, here's Arnold who stays up late. He does all the reps. He never gives up. He pushes through, even if he's tired. Now we have the society of people who say, well, oh, I had a hard day and to treat myself, I'm going to have a donut and to treat myself, I'm going to have a a nap and watch Netflix instead of going to the gym. And it's like, you need to love yourself enough to say, you know what? Yes, I would love a donut right now, but is that going to help me in two weeks from now? Am I going to be closer to my goal or further away from my goal? And it's taken over so much. It's so prevalent that loving yourself is only hindering them. It's taking people further and further away from their goals. Absolutely. You know, uh, and I think that comes to uh, this uh, pity party type of mentality. I've, I've heard many people say, man, this week has been really tough. I need a couple of drinks. Yeah. You know, what for? I mean, you know, yeah. again, I'm, if you drink, great. But when, when you're using that as a relief mechanism, as a yeah. crutch, then, yeah. you know, again, same thing with food, the same thing with anything else. Uh, so everybody has a bad day or a bad week. And sometimes, you know, you get up and you, and, and you brush yourself off and you, and you get going again. Yeah. But I think that you're right. People have gotten this warped sense of, I don't know, self-love. And again, the other issue is, is that it's so easy. It's so easy to grab this. Yeah. Or grab that. Uh, you know, perfect example. I have two teenage daughters left at home. Mm-hmm. They're both, they're twins. And, uh, they will eat fruits and vegetables when is it when it's as convenient as grabbing so true. A, yeah cereal or, or top ramen or whatever right uh, it's I think they're they're kind of my little test subjects they're more or less the way the rest of us think and so uh, they could be starving but they won't make anything good to eat they will look for the pantry and you know, see what what can they get with with the easy the easiest amount of of, uh, of work, right? And so uh, I think that's a great uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, not example, but kind of a stereotype of what's happening out there in society. We just want something fast and easy and whatever. So uh, all right, so listen, we're out of time. I wanted to say thank you for stopping by. It's been so much fun having you. And uh, if somebody wants to reach out to you on Facebook, they can go here at Becky Overbeck Fitness forward slash Babe Cave. And it's been a blast. I think uh, I think her side just seized up. Oh, it did. Oh, well, OK. So anyway, guys, thank you for joining me and Becky today or Becky and I. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And as always, my friends, thank you so much. Remember, you were created to succeed.